We were contracted to produce three short videos by the Alberta government's trout stocking program, and we've combined them here. The first details how triploid trout are created, what the process is, and a look at the details involved. Triploiding can be done with all trout, and is also the process by which brook trout and brown trout are crossed to create tiger trout. The second video takes a look at the now endangered West Slope cutthroat trout and the recovery project in Alberta. The program uses a mobile quarantine unit and it's fascinating to see the tiny streams it's occurring in as well as how few and small the trout are in the project. The last video details the importance of brood DNA selection and tracking in a hatchery program to ensure as pure genetics are moved forward for as much longevity as possible in a stocking program. Triploiding of stock trout is a process that sterilizes trout. Sterilization has several benefits to fisheries managers. Foremost is the reduction of genetic interaction between hatchery and wild fish preventing the establishment of non-native genetics in a watershed or wild population. Triploid trout can live longer than diploid trout. Growth and size can be substantially more than diploid trout if managers delay harvest in waters these are stocked. And the process reduces mortality of stocked populations by elimination of post-spawning season stress as there is no development of eggs and milt. The triploiding process is labor-intensive, requiring specific attention to detail via small batches of fertilized eggs being pressure shocked. This results in the retention of a third set of chromosomes, causing sterilization. As spawning season approaches, adults are observed for ripeness. Once ready to spawn, the ripe males and females are sorted. Females are expressed and eggs are collected in 1.5 liter containers and transferred to the triploiding area in a cooler on ice. The eggs are weighed to closely estimate the amount of melt required. Males are expressed to collect melt in 3 mil syringes. These are also moved to the triploiding area in a cooler on ice. At the triploiding area, as soon as the fertilization process begins, time is critical. Time zero of the entire effort begins at the first lot's fertilization and lots are fertilized 10 minutes apart. 1300 grams of eggs are mixed with 6 to 8 syringes of milt and a milt activation solution is added. The eggs and milt are mixed and let stand for 2 minutes. Fertilized eggs are washed of impurities to ensure the lot is as clean and pure as possible. The eggs are transferred to a net container and held in 10 degrees Celsius water where egg development occurs based on the accumulated temperature minutes for the trout species being processed. Once the required accumulated temperature minutes are reached, the eggs are transferred into the cylinder and placed into the pressure shocker. Pressure builds to 9500 to 10,000 psi, again species dependent. The pressure is held for 5 minutes, which blocks the extrusion of the third polar body during meiosis, causing the eggs to have 3 chromosomes instead of 2, rendering them sterile. At 5 minutes, the pressure is reduced and the eggs are transferred to a water hardening bucket. After 2-3 to three hours, they're disinfected, inventoried, and placed in an incubator. 
Most eggs are incubated until the eyed stage, about 22 to 32 days at 10 degrees depending on species. At that time, they're cleaned up and shipped to the provincial hatcheries for hatching, rearing, and stocking into public waters. Upon emergence, the alevin are sustained from their yolk sac for up to three weeks. Once the yolk sac is completely absorbed, the swim-up fry are moved to various troughs and then to circular tanks. smaller streams and creeks in Alberta have had habitat impacts occur that reduce the ability of native fish to spawn and eggs to survive through to fry emergence. There are native salmonids and char in Alberta that are now considered species at risk. West Slope Cutthroat Trout, Bull Trout, Athabasca Rainbow Trout and Arctic Grayling quickly come to mind. As part of restoration efforts in Fisheries Branch, Specific stream and creek assistance can now occur thanks to the creation of a quarantine rearing unit at Allison Creek Brood Station. The quarantine unit is based on a wheeled trailer. While at present it's being used as an on-site quarantine unit, it could be moved to other sites within a watershed or used in conjunction with generator power in the field on site for specific purposes. Currently the unit is being used for the Pure Strain West Slope Cutthroat Trout Restoration Project. Biologists can target streams and tributaries that have abundant populations, pure strains, or other criteria. The unit allows them to take eggs, to assist increasing egg survival, increase fry emergence and survival in a stream, or to reallocate eggs from one stream to a nearby sister stream in the upper reaches of a watershed. The unit works extremely well when targeted to restoration work specific to a geographically tight watershed region. Being a quarantine unit, there are stringent biosecurity protocols maintained at all stages from the stream to the unit and back again. The trailer contains a pumped, recirculating, closed loop water system maintained at 10 degrees Celsius by an onboard cooling unit. There is a solids filter system and periodic addition of fresh water. An onboard UV unit filters out viruses and pathogens and pumps ensure adequate flow through the entire system. While the unit is monitored daily, there are alarms in case of malfunction. The primary purpose of the quarantine unit is to incubate fertilized eggs collected from wild stocks. Egg survival through to fry emergence is low in the wild, about 10%. Being isolated, the variables that limit success can be specifically targeted in the quarantine unit to maximize the successful incubation of wild stock in excess of 70% emergence. Fisheries technicians electroshock target streams during the spawning season. Ripe males and females are collected in special holding units. Once the required number of males and females have been collected, eggs and milt are collected and mixed. The fertilized eggs are allowed to water harden and prepared for transportation to the incubation unit. It's important to note that there may be fewer than a dozen wild female trout that contribute to the egg collection. There may be only 1200 eggs brought in to incubate from any project. Given the cold upper watershed streams where these projects are occurring, the females are typically 20 centimeters in length with low fecundity. One female may only have 150 eggs. The numbers are generally low, which is normal for these locations. 
Upon arrival at the unit, the eggs are disinfected and the stream water they were transported in destroyed. The eggs are counted and female fecundity assessed. This helps biologists in future planning for that stream. The eggs are put into incubation trays with a constant flow of water to remove CO2 and any other impurities, as well as to provide oxygen to the eggs. Between fertilization to the eyed stage, eggs are extremely sensitive and can't be touched or moved and remain isolated in these incubation trays. Once the eggs eye up, the blank eggs can be removed in order to minimize any impurities that could lead to fungal infection of the lot. The eggs are typically incubated to the eyed egg stage. The quarantine unit can manipulate eye updates by changing water temperature and delaying or speeding up delivery date as needed due to environmental conditions of release location and timing. These eyed eggs are then placed in egg tubes and packed in insulated shipping containers. They're transported back to their natal streams to be placed in remote streamside incubators that the fry swim out of at the swim up stage. Survival to the swim-up stage using this method has been as high as 80%, where wild stock survival may only be 0 to 5%. The province of Alberta owns and operates four fish hatcheries, one of which is the Allison Creek Brood Station situated in the Crow's Nest Pass. Alberta's brood trout station's main job is to supply our two provincial fish hatcheries with quality eyed trout eggs while maintaining strong genetics. Each station also raises some trout to stock into a wide diversity of local lakes, ponds and reservoirs. To accomplish this in perpetuity, it's critical to maintain the best genetic purity available in a closed genetic lineup. Alberta brood trout stations employ a three-line genetic cross to slow inbreeding through generations. We pick up the genetic loop as the eggs have hatched and fish reared to juvenile age at the brood station. These are about a year old. Each genetic line has been reared independently to this stage in separate troughs and circulars. At the juvenile age, individuals are clipped to their genetic line as identified through genetic tracking. These juveniles are first sedated. One lot will have its adipose fin clipped and become known as Lot A. The next lot will have its maxillary clipped and become known as Lot B for bite and the third lot is left complete and is known as Lot C. All genetic lines in males and females can now be brought together and raised in rearing units at the brood station, making feeding and caring for them streamlined over the next two years to sexual maturity. Fast forward to their sexual maturity year and it's determined the brood line adults are ripe. Males and females are separated into different pond sections. In a labor-intensive process, the fish are sorted once a week during the spawning season. As each female and male has their eggs and milk expressed and collected, it's identified as to its A, B or C genetic line and grouped together.
During egg expression, about 200 eggs from each female are collected and placed in a separate small bowl. As the A, B, and C line melt is collected, the appropriate genetic crossings are made and the eggs fertilized. The eggs are fertilized by crossing A-line females with B-line males, B-line females with C-line males, and C-line females with A-line males. The remaining eggs and milt are collected to supply the province's general fish stocking requirements. The fertilized eggs are then transferred to incubation cubes marked with their new genetic line identified as A, B or C. The eggs are incubated until the eyed egg stage where 20 to 30 eggs from each female are selected. The new genetic line eggs are then separated into incubation trays and hatched and grown until they are large enough to clip. 